Hi, it's Day to Day with St. Joseph. And today on our program, I'm going to be continuing a little bit what we talked about the last two days about Christ as a mediator. Okay. Uh, and that Joseph had, you know, that great closeness to Jesus. We would call it a real presence. Today we talk about being in front of the Blessed Sacrament as real presence, but he was with Jesus, the God man in the flesh and also the divine one and so he would have had special uh, understanding access to the lord although it was really under development because uh, jesus hadn't started his earthly ministry yet at least the revealed ministry and joseph actually wouldn't see that ministry but he already was formed um, by Jesus just by living with them and understanding that he was a mediator of a new covenant and that people needed to believe in him. And Jesus wasn't just coming for some mental ascent or just, just another teacher of things, but that Jesus was the person of God and that he would make an appeal to the world and appeal to be reconciled, appeal to make peace with God, appeal to be open to God. And so you had to believe. So it wasn't just this mental idea of God and just some knowledge without the faith, without knowledge. Faith was really a very important part of this. A believing knowledge is what uh, Joseph began to see, is what the ministry of Jesus would be about. And then Jesus would make an appeal from his heart. And he's calling people uh, for their heart to respond, the faith part of them. And Joseph certainly responds from his heart. And it's the secret story of, of his own. Now, speaking of stories, there's a story of a person who gets up to glory. They get to the gates and St. Peter is there and he's with, uh, he's got this, this measuring tape. And the person gets to the gates and he has measured out 18 inches. And he says, okay, stand 18 inches from the gate. He said, okay. And he says, this is how uh, far or how close you were of getting in. You fell short of getting into heaven by 18 inches. And they went, what? What do you mean I fell short by 18 inches? He says, you never really let the, uh, the knowledge that you had in there get down into here. You really didn't let that journey happen. And so uh, you're falling short by 18 inches. So how far is heaven? Could it just be 18 inches, the difference between the head and the heart? Uh, I open up with that little story. Uh, it's, it's used uh, correctly, sometimes incorrectly, that story. Um, but the idea is that if we don't let God uh, move from just an intellectual, mental ascent in our head, and get down to the heart of believing in him. No. You shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, soul, strength. If we just, you know, just have the uh, the awareness of information that Jesus came and said he died for our sins. But if you don't believe on him or act on that, then you cannot be saved. And you would miss heaven then by... Uh, 18 inches, the difference between the head and the heart, about the distance of this statue here. So Jesus invites us, though, to have this heart-to-heart -heart relationship and mind-to-mind, -mind, and he wants our will to be mingled with his. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, not just our will, but God's will. And he wants the strength of our life. He wants service, action, works that he will inspire. This is Jesus, the Sacred Heart. But we can't just have a mental ascent 
Uh, that would be like looking at our car dash and seeing E or the seeing the uh, you know the signal that we're running out of gas and say oh okay and then just be unresponsive to it we uh, act on what God has revealed to us you believe in God you would do well to says James 219 but the devils also believe and tremble Yes, Revelation 20 says that there's the devils who, quote-unquote, believe, are cast into the lake of fire. What it is, is they, they recognize. They don't really believe. They recognize, just like the, you know, the demons and the evil spirits that recognize Christ. Uh, and then he cast them out. You know, what have you to do with us? And they're recognizing Christ and his authority, but they're part of the rebellion of angels. And there's going to be a rebellion of man who won't make that journey of opening their hearts and their minds, their will, and the direction of their life, their strength. Romans 10 says, verse 9 and 10, Every man with a heart believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confesses and brought to conf uh, salvation. If you confess the Lord Jesus or the Lordship of Jesus and believe that God raised him up from the dead, you shall be saved. That's St. Paul in his famous passage in Romans 10, and he follows it up with verse 13. So whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, recognizing the name above every other name, right? Acknowledging Jesus as Lord is first is our love, is our reason to live. And when we call on the name of the Lord, like at Mass, when we say glory to God in the highest, address to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we sing hallelujah, praise God, and our holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Glory to God, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. It's an appeal that the Lord uh, can be our Savior, our mediator, the one to take us uh, to glory, to eternal life. Let us go a little further on in Hebrews with this theme of Christ the mediator and as a heavenly priest mediating for us. Chapter 8, the main point of what has been said is this. We have such a high priest who has taken a seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle that the Lord, not man, set up. He obtained so much more excellent a ministry as he is mediator of a better covenant enacted on better promises. As Hebrews explains, you know, what had happened up to Christ Jesus and then what happens when Jesus comes in his covenant. And then we go back and look about a covenant. The days is coming when there is a new covenant. This covenant I will establish. I will put my laws in their minds and write them upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. 